the Lord has put things in the earth to teach us about him. Water. Water takes different forms. Water can be a liquid, it can be a solid in the form of ice, and it can be gas. Three separate distinct forms, yet all water. And he says, I'm using this to teach you about me. I'm the father of creation. I'm the son of redemption. And I'm the Holy Ghost in keeping you in the earth. But I'm God. Not three separate gods. Not God the father. God the... I'm just water. I'm God. I'm the spirit. I move. Anything with more than one head is a freak, including God. James chapter 2 verse 19 James chapter 2 verse 19 you believe there is one God you do well <laughs> the devils believe also and they tremble you can't believe there's one God and not do something about it even the devil does something about it I just want to say I'm thankful to the Lord for brother Buster for the five-fold ministry and for him and his life, he's a man of God. And I welcome you and I honor you today. Take your liberty. If you're a guest at Turn Point today, would you raise your hand up? Do we have some guests in the house? We're going to give you a big hand clap for coming. One moment, sis. Tap her, please. Pastor just shared with me, Pastor just shared with me that this is the 10th anniversary, I think. Just passed. Oh, let's give the Lord a hand clap. I'm glad that Joe Arada and his family are our friends. And I love coming. But if y'all don't let me come back, I want to remain friends. I'll tell you that. He, he's, he's your lead worshiper. Now, just in case some of our guests are not acquainted with some of the folk around here, and I don't know you all by name, I, uh, you know, you're an extended part of my family, but I certainly don't know all of your names because there's got to be at least 50 people here today. I know what you're thinking. Would you come here, sis? What's your first name? Javia. Javia? Yes. Did I say it right? Yes. Javia. So I know what you're thinking. Javier is 22 years of age. She's richer than God. At 22, she can retire, never have to go back to work again and have a financial worry in the rest of her life. And she's never had a problem. She's never had to have a healing. She's never had God to have to reach down and pick her up. And you're saying, no wonder she can do that at 22 years of age, being mega wealthy and never having a problem and never having a... But you know different than that. This joy that I have, the world did not give it to me. And the world cannot take it away. Can I preach 45 minutes? I don't have to ask him permission. He'll just, he's never ever pulled my coattail, but I think we can do it in 35 minutes, but can I just have 45 because in the evening last night, the Holy Ghost came into that hotel room and just settled over me and began to speak to me. I believe with all my heart, I've come to this pulpit with a word from the throne of heaven. Mr. Soundman, this crowd is probably going to get loud. Don't worry about me. Don't turn them down. 
You just may have to turn me up. It's going to be a little hard to follow me, IT team, because I'm, I'm just... It was through the night. Three years ago, I came here, about three years ago, and I preached the word. God can do in no time what we can't do in a lifetime. I preached that from Dan to Beersheba, but it came right here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, last night at about 9.30 p.m. your time, 10 p.m., the word of the Lord came unto me again. John chapter 12, verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where, the, where Lazarus, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus. <laughs> he was one of them that sat at the table with him. Oh, God, speak a word in this house. I release joy, unspeakable and full of glory. And with joy shall we draw waters from the wells of salvation. Intoxicating joy. Faith. Miracles. Would you lay that Bible down and give him a big hand clap in the house? Lord Jesus, have your way in this house and we'll give you all the praise and the glory. My very dear wife sends her greetings. My bride in joy. Paul Newman one time said, why go out from, for spam when you got filet mignon at home? She's my brown haired, brown eyed gal. And since I've been here, we have new monikers. She's lolly, I'm pops. Because September last year, George Wyatt Terrell came into this world. And a kid like me is a grandfather. Who would have thunk it? Thank you, Pastor Rada. Thank you so much for letting us come back. We never want to take it for granted. And I never just want to get through a meeting. I'm watching the clock. Not because I feel I need to get out of here. I value your time. And we're going to have a great time this morning and tonight. Should the Lord tarry. If not, it'll be better over there. Are you going to help me? You may be seated. You don't have to go through all these scriptures with me, uh, IT department, because I'm going to be going quite a, through quite a few here. Like I said, about 10 p.m. last night, I had an encounter with God, and I want to share that with you. And you judge. You judge, and please, please don't feel bad in doing so. The Bible basically says to do so. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, to everything there is a season and a time, every purpose, to every purpose under the sun. Really? Okay. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, the time to pluck up that which was planted. A time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. That's when you're 16. <laughs> a time to get, a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to rend, a time to serve. So, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. Oh God, give me the wisdom to know which is which. A time to love and a time to hate. Hmm. A time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? 
I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. And finally, verse 11. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he that hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. He hath made everything beautiful in its time. Second hmm. Peter 3 and 8. <clears throat> but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord is as a thousand years. And a thousand years is as a day. Hmm. Psalm 90, 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Just a few things randomly here to throw into the mix. Can't go through it all and I will get some things chronologically mixed up, but... Abraham was 86 years old when Ishmael was born, but that was not the miracle. That was the mistake because he produced it in the natural way because Sarai panicked and said, the clock has run out. I'm past the flower of my age. And I'll tell you what, if this is going to happen, you just take Hagar, go on down the Best Western. Fourteen years passed, and when he turned 100, God said, well, you're a ripe old age now. Ah, let me look at your shopping bag. No green bananas. Let me look at the way you're walking. Mm -hmm. One foot in the grave, the other on a banana peel. Oh, I heard you said you just retired. Oh, no, you're not going to retire. You're going to refire because now that your seed has died in your loins, I'm about to be to you what I've never called myself before because from this moment, I will call myself El Shaddai. Not a great God, not a big God, great God Almighty, God of gods, King of kings, Lord of lords. Come on, turn that seatbelt loose. You've got a praise in you. There's something in the atmosphere that's already begun to affect my vocal cords a little bit, so keep the sound up just a little bit, but I want to make sure that you all, uh, you all can hear me out there because that was some good stuff right there. It's because it's the word of God. Hmm. Wow. And Sarai, who became Sarah, was 90 when she conceived Isaac. John chapter 12 is awesome. I'm going to tell you what I want to do. In situations in my life, that are challenging. I want to go to John chapter 12, verse 1, right on down to and Lazarus, who was dead, whom Jesus raised from the dead, was one of them that sat at the table. I just want to get to the table. Bring it on. Mort loves whatever you're cooking. My Lord, Lazarus, it's good to see you. Man, you've been brought back from the dead. Whew. You don't even smell like you were dead. You don't resemble a corpse or a cadaver. You're exactly as I knew you were, but my Lord, you've got a spring in your step and a steel in your spine and a sparkle in your eye that you never had. Ladies and gentlemen, several years ago, Actually, to be exact, 15 years ago, I was in the beautiful hills of Virginia, and uh, after a meeting, a very successful friend of mine uh, invited me to his house for food. You don't have to call me twice for food. I'm going to tell you right now, I've never had to take a doggy bag out of a steakhouse. I can put it down. I know that that might disappoint you, but I'm sorry, I like food. We don't smoke, we don't chew, there's not a lot that we can do. Don't mess with food. So, 
this friend of mine, he, he, he's a hotelier. He owns several hotels. He's a very successful attorney, very successful practice that he built. Uh, entrepreneur, great business acumen, and, and everything about him resembles excellence. So we get to his house, and he says, hey, Mort, how about if I make us a sandwich? So you're telling me in that Sub-Zero refrigerator, you don't have a filet mignon back in there? And, 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 and what is the name of one of the chicken joints that's up and down the East Coast? Not Popeye's, not KFC's, it's not Chick-fil-A. No, no, I can't think about it. But they had one of those chicken joints, and I have another confession. Mort loves chicken. They had one of those, I wish I could think of the name, but when I leave, I'll think about it. There's actually one in Terminal T in the Atlanta airport. Any travelers know? Which one is that? If you think about it and get it, let me know. And he said, I, I'm going I'm to make us a sandwich. I should have put two and two together. Now, he's not a tightwad. He has the spirit of excellence. What he does, he does it with all of his heart. I don't know why my brain shut down. But I'm thinking, a sandwich? Well, I'm not exactly the iron chef, but I can throw a sandwich together. So I said, oh, no, Dan, don't worry about it. I'll make it. And the ingredients were all on the nice uh, island in the kitchen. Just, just everything was there. I just took two slices of bread. I think I took a little mayo, slathered it on, and a couple of slices of turkey, and maybe, I, maybe just some slice of cheese, and I sat down. But I noticed that Dan was taking his time with his. Now, he offered to make mine. And I'm sitting down there, and I'm, I'm not crazy about eating a sandwich because I'm, I'm hungry because, you know, after a service, you get hungry. And, and I'm sitting there, and I'm not in the best mood. Now, if that's all you got, praise God, I'll eat it. But when you've got vehicles in your garage that cost more than, you know, as much as my house, and I'm looking at the nuances and the appointments and the amenities of this fine, humongous home, and he didn't buy that suit at Target. I'm thinking, okay. And I'm eating that sandwich, and then he walks in after it took him some time, and oh my goodness. I wanted to go to chicken what? What's the name of that? My mind is working in so many ways, but it's shutting down other ways. Bojangles. Jangles. I mean, it looks so nice that that famous sandwich place in New York City in Manhattan that just closed down. I've been there twice. I knew the manager. I got my picture taken with him, John. Oh, it's named after one of the families that helped build America, you know. Carnegie Deli. I'm coming back. Marilyn, you won't have to make me wrap my own Christmas gifts and hide them. <laughs> my memory's coming back. Carnegie Deli. Man, I wanted to go back and throw rocks in it. I'm thinking, boy, I, I wouldn't mind if he just slows down and sees that I'm not enjoying it. And before he nauseous the first, before he takes the first bite, I'm hoping he'll say, You want this? I think I would have lunged at it. I just 
hurried through the process. And I made a sandwich. But when a man knew more about a sandwich than I ever, th that I ever knew, whew, when he sat down with that, I wanted to say, oh my goodness, I did not take enough time. Man, I wished I could go write the John 12, but here's the kicker. Now, this is the backstory. John 11, verse 1. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. These were two ladies and their brother that supported his evangelistic endeavors. They prayed for him, they cooked for him, and they may even have reached into their pocketbooks for him. They believed in him. So they know if they'll just send the news to where Jesus is that the brother is is sick, everything's okay. Therefore his sister said unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. That'll get him. Lazarus, let me take your temp. Just keep, stay laying down there, buddy. Here, hydrate yourself, Lazarus. It's gonna be all right. We just sent messengers to Jesus and they told him, you know, Lazarus whom you love is sick. Yeah, and by the way, if you want to have a nice hot meal, just don't forget about that. And if you want, you know, the faithful ones to attend your next miracle crusade, you know, just remember that. So it's going to be all right. So they were geared up for a healing. Pastor Joarada, I have received so many texts and phone calls of people close to me in my circle that need healing. I will not mention names, but you and I know the names. They need a healing. They need a physical miracle. I have a dear friend of mine who needs a major financial miracle right now. I have a very dear friend of mine who for the last 10 years has been in a desperate need of a miracle in his home. And I know he's a God who heals. And I know he's a miracle working God. And among the hundreds of people here today, many of you need a healing in your body right now. Some of you need a miracle in your body right now. Some of you need desperately a miracle in your marriage, among your children. Somewhere in your family you need a miracle. And many of you probably need a financial miracle right now. And this is what I say every day. I go through my mantra in, my, in prayer, but I don't want to just, you know, use vain repetitions. But when I begin the prayer, first thing I do is I say, oh, Lord, wash me in your blood and cleanse me. And then I say, I receive your body that was broken. I receive your blood that was shed. And then I say, right now, I approach a holy God before a throne of grace and throne of mercy. And then I declare in the morning from the rising of the sun until the going down the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. I did that before I ever got on a plane yesterday morning. And when I left pastor after the uh, lunch, the dinner, I mean, I went into the hotel room. I didn't want media. I didn't want anything on. I raised my hands. I said, from the rising of the sun and to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. But I also say this about Marilyn and I. I say Marilyn and I are loved by a God who has infinite, boundless, indescribable love. He, I say this. He loves us more than any human being ever could. He loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believeth in him should not perish. Number two, I say his love is perfect. Your love is perfect. And I say, oh God, thank you for not changing. And please don't ever change because change implies improvement. How can you improve the perfect? You see, here's the deal. When you and I were lost and undone without God's only son, he loved us with a perfect love that day. And when you walked in here and gave your heart to Jesus and we put you down and you came up under the water after in Jesus' name and speaking in tongues, he did not love you one bit more because he can't. His love is perfect. I gotta tell you, he loves you right now. 
and he's a God of compassion. compassion. And right now, he's the God who heals of all diseases. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. I would that you prosper be in health, even as your soul prospers. He sent his word and healed them. Right now. So, when Jesus heard this, he spoke. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Thank you for the word. My problem is, I perceive what he said. Sometimes more than I receive what he said. I figured it out. I said, this is how it's going to be. So when they came back, Mary and Martha said, did you tell them that Lazarus, whom he loves, is sick? Yes. So he heard you? Yes. Are you sure? Absolutely. Well, did he say anything? Yes. He said, the sickness is not on the death, but this is for the glory of God. Come here. Come here, 22-year-old. Come on. Have you still got some spring in your step? You know what they did? You know what Mary and Martha did? They did begin to do this here. Woo! Woo! Lazarus! Lazarus! God spoke! Man, they were shouting in Bethany. However, over where Jesus was, when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he stayed two days still. See, that's not deep to you, but that word just leapt off the page. I wish that I could preach like some of the cats in our movement, but I am so shallow. I, 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 I'm like the, the story of the two Indians that were on that little mesa and they were trying to send up a smoke signal. And then all of a sudden over here, the cloud from Hiroshima. Whoosh, and one looked the other and said, I wished I would have thought of saying that. People take the text I preach from and I'm thinking, okay, I've, I've got, I can read. Why didn't I get that? But I got to go back here. When Jesus heard, therefore, that he was sick, he stayed two days in the same place? No. He stayed two days still. Be still. And know that I am God. I know if it would have been you or I, we would have rushed to Bethany. We would have grabbed the oil. We would have ran in and anointed him, slathered his forehead and said, get up. But we would have run ahead of God. We would have went there by ourselves. But he stayed two days still in the same place where he was. Mary and Martha, you don't understand. I know you're looking down the road because it's not a long journey. Uh, you know the time it's going to take and you're going to see him coming down with some disciples that same way you're about to see him. I don't know, Mary. Something must be delaying him. Let's give it five more minutes because he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He loves us. He loves Lazarus. Now, we know he can heal him because, Mary, do you remember all the healing campaigns we've been in? We've watched the blinded eyes open. We've watched lame arms, lame legs, lepers cleanse. God's got this. Have you seen the armband? God's got this. Anybody got one on? Anybody wearing one right now? 
You're not? Okay. I was on a flight coming in from Oklahoma City just a couple weeks ago. A gentleman sitting beside me had on one arm ran. He said, God's got this. Second week of February 2018, just a few months ago, God told Marilyn and I, God's got this. So Mary and Martha are saying, God's got this. It's going to be a sad occasion, Brother Joe, because the sun's going to set and darkness is going to come and he will not have appeared. Can you still stand up and say, and to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord my God. Mart, sit down in my easy chair. I want to make us a sandwich. Oh, no, Dan. I'm hungry. No bojangles. I'll make the sandwich. Oh, gee, Dan, how kind of you. What an altruistic person. You got our regular feed the home. What's going on here? A regular soup kitchen. He had something else in mind. And I should have left it to him. Right now, God's got you on his mind. Right now, he's planning your situation. So he stayed two days. And they awakened the next day and they thought, oh, wow. Now, this is really getting crazy. <laughs> it's been two days. He hasn't come. Lazarus was sick, but I guess he wasn't sick enough. And then the unthinkable, and that which was not supposed to happen, and that which appears to be contrary to the word of God happened, Lazarus died. I'm ticked off. My home was desperate. I needed a miracle. I needed an explanation. You know, I want to serve you. I want to live for you. But I didn't sign up for this. You're a holy God, but you're all, uh, you're, 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 you're all powerful. You could have healed him. I wonder how many people have walked away and said, you could have healed him. You could have healed him. It could have happened. Man, there's a lot of thoughts in my mind right now. I got so many questions. He could have, but he didn't. Well, we'll give it a little more time and let some more people come and view the corpse. Then it's time to call the funeral home. It's time to make sure the sepulcher is ready. We've got to prepare them. Ladies and gentlemen, the enemy's going to tell you your request has been denied. I've come to tell you it's been delayed. I have come to tell you that he who has declared the end from the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, he's the author, he's the finisher. God already was God already declared John chapter 12 now Jesus returned to Bethany and he sat at the table and he who was dead whom Jesus raised back to life sat was one who sat at the table with him God already had that right there in place but he said, I've got something bigger in mind. Ladies and gentlemen, your setback is a setup. Jesus is about to give you more than just a healing of an arthritic condition. Jesus is about to do more than to just a replace a vertebrae that's deteriorating in your spine. Jesus is about to do more than just give you a new car. Jesus is about to do more than just to give you a new house. If you will let him, he'll load you up. He'll load you down. They knew that.
that he could heal. But Jesus said, I'm going to reveal myself as more than a healer. I am resurrection and I am life. Somebody, somebody would have had to have endured a sleepless night in order to write he's the bright and the morning star someone would have had to have passed through a deep dark valley to say he's the lily of the valley somebody had to walk into a fiery furnace to meet the fourth man somebody had to pray three times a day in a den of lions that God shut the mouth of the lions Somebody had to stand tall and step into a hot furnace. Anybody here ever been healed before? Come on, raise your hand. If you know that you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that Jesus at some point has healed you, raise your hand. You could not have been healed unless something came on you or in you that required healing. Is my organ player in the house? Maestro, are you here? Come on, organ player. We're going to throw it down now. I know you have packed your soul with you. So, I came in last night and I met my friend and and we went to one of the finest establishments in Winchester Canal to eat. But I found out there's a world beyond Winchester Canal. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's let the Hammond get warmed up. Let's let the Hammond, because we, we've got to have music for this one. Oh. Sister Arata, when I left him, I have to go through my time of prayer. I'm not trying to pretend I'm spiritual. But since I believe he dwells in praise, every day, a few times a day, I pitch a tent. Praise. Praise. And, and since I found out wherever two or three have gathered in his name, I get Marilyn in the tent with me and we praise. So I'm like you. We need a miracle. And a few weeks ago, we said, a, a, as passionate of a prayer as I've ever spoken. I did it the way I've done it with you for years, and we've had all kind of miracles happen just like that. So I did it. Woke up the next morning and said, What? I got up the next day. And I prayed and woke up the next day. What? And then last night, I said, Pastor, I'm going to get my devotion in. I'm going to be in bed at a very good time. I just needed rest. But now I realize a God who runs the universe was saying, I'm calling you to that hotel to get away from everything because I'm going to talk to you. So I laid on that bed last night. And I started going to sleep around 9.35 p.m., which is 8.35 p.m. my time. Because I get up early. Not as early as many of you. And as I was laying there, I began to hear the scripture teach me to number my days. I began to think about, man, I want to get into John 12. But God said, you got to read John 11. Mary and Martha both at different times came and said you could have healed them oh but ladies before the dust settles today in Bethany you won't be weeping you'll be leaping you, you think you think this is your last family sit down at the table because he come home on crack you thought this was the last time the family would have harmony and peace because she went out and gave it up. Come on, sir. 
It's just John chapter 11. One day you're going to turn the page. And John 12 is going to be there. Maestros, get ready to bring it up and help me. Go ahead and bring it up. Because I said, Jesus, the two days was the greatest gift you gave Mary and Martha. Because if they could have twisted your arm and had things their way, they would have had another healing. But I told God, I don't want just a healing. I want my home put back like David. David, after Ziklag, he ran to the enemy's camp. He came home sweaty, tired, but the Bible said he recovered all. I don't want just the healing. I want my home on fire for God. I don't want just a financial breakthrough. I want to break every hold the enemy has. Number two, what happens in my home? I want to break to Grow Port, Ohio. I want a higher level. I want greater faith. Help me make it through the night. Help me make it through the night. Joy comes in the morning. Stand up all over this house. Miracles are going to happen today. Healing is going to happen today. People are going to be changed today. But some of you, you're going to have a two-day waiting time. Oh! But if you will trust Him. You see, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, three or four years ago when I stepped into this pulpit on a Sunday morning, and I read where Jesus turned the water into wine. And for the first time, I preached, He can do in no time what we can't do in a lifetime. God doesn't need time. So, I know you're in a storm. And I know the winds and waves and waves are bashing your vessel. I know it's the fourth watch of the night. It's that dark moment before the dawn. And someone's walking. On the water. Are you, are you amazed at someone walking on the water? Or are you disappointed that whoever it is, they're not running to you? Someone's walking on the water. Okay, genius. If they can walk on water, let them run over here because we need saving now. Doesn't it make sense? Anyone who can walk on water and not step on an iPhone or a purse or a fan, anyone who can walk on water, we know they can run. They see you in a terrible situation. Maybe they're walking because they're not worried. Maybe they know something that you don't. Maybe they, they know the end from the beginning. Maybe they know you're going to make it through the storm. So this is what I also say every day, Joe. I say this home is under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That's what I say. And then I say, we bow to your sovereignty and we trust you with the process. I just grabbed two slices of bread. Sure isn't 
Ruth's crisp, the lemon yo. And it sure isn't Bojangles fried chicken. And then Danny comes in, oh, toasted perfectly, melted cheese. I don't know if that was a Monte Cristo, a Reuben. I just know it was better than mine. down to nothing but God's up to something can you trust him now why don't you bring your situation right now come on come on get it pick it up okay I've got one I've got a big situation I've got it I'll come back here with you I've got it I'm gonna bring it up here lay it here and I'm going to lift my hands and praise him right now you're welcome to bring yours right now I know if you've got one you're not going to stand back there I didn't say it had to be healing I just said a situation stretch him out the atmosphere is about to shift in here when I patted your chest I felt something go through your chest I felt something go into your blood pressure over the area of your heart I really did I really did I really did you and this gentleman back there I stood close to you I think right over here I could have went when they were taking up the offering and put my hand on your neck all the way down your spine. I could have prayed for disc invertebrae all the way. I could have prayed for sciatica, stenosis, saccharilliac. I could have prayed for a whole lot of things. But God is touching you right now. I'm going to tell you. He's not taking two days so that he can hurry up and get a plan of action together. He's not taking two days so he can get in the in the miracle working anointing mode. No, no. He's not taking two days so he can finally develop a strategy that's going to work. As I said two or three years ago, he doesn't need time, but he might be giving you the gift of time so that you'll milk this dry, so that you'll get everything out of this that you can get. So you will come out blessed, favored, anointed, healed, anointed again. Double portion anointed. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Reach out. Reach out. Reach out. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. He doesn't need time, but he's given us the gift of time so that we'll take our time. I don't want just something. I want everything. You know, nine lepers were healed of a disease called leprosy but the tenth took a little time the tenth wanted to join the nine and pick up where life dropped off before he was pronounced unclean he wanted to rejoin his family but he just took a little time and he came back fell at the feet of Jesus and said I cannot leave without thanking the one who's given it back to me and as he was standing there praising that finger that had rotted off stretched back out that limb that was missing something was restored replaced he was made whole Praise him right now. In your patience, in your patience, possess ye your soul. 
A day is as a thousand years. A thousand years is as a day. Ooh, let this man be like the sons of Issachar. Let him know the seasons and the times. Order his steps. Anoint him with the gift of the word of wisdom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't you let your neck drop back toward the nape of your neck? Why don't you extend your hands so high you can almost touch a rafter? Why don't you reach way, way, way into your belly? Why not send up a praise? Why not do it loudly? Ecclesiastes said there's a time to speak and a time to be silent. It's a time to shout. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Oh! Do that again. Do that again. Ooh. Yes. Yes. song you're about to hear is one that I just heard playing in my wife's laundry room she had it on her iPhone and she was just ironing shirts for me and this is what was being sung I 
daughter I said please post on my ministry Facebook page this quote but I already vetted it to make sure it was original if not I would have given someone else credit I said put on the post or post this God can do in no time what we cannot do in a lifetime and he turned the water to wine I've got a new one for your day this is not original get ready to reach out as if you're about to take something okay like this or you can do it like this but wait wait get ready to reach as if you're about to take okay so it's not just praise but take are you ready let's do it take your time because it's a gift because time is a quantity money is not a, quant- a commodity time is Take your time if he's given it to you. Now, I might be a thousand miles off and I will stand corrected because believe me, I'm not infallible. God does use me very deep in the prophetic at times, but I feel like I'm supposed to tell you that you've been a giant among spiritual leaders at times in your life and you have reached the summit of mountaintops, but at times you know what it's like to be on something less than a mountain, but I tell you that God's going to sustain your strength and how beautiful are the feet of those that bear the glad tidings of peace. I tell you that God will not forsake you. The God who has been you with you shall abide with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever capacity you walked in favor and anointing, I speak that over you in Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, had to take his time. He was God in flesh, but he was perfect God and perfect man. He was the Son of God, the Son of Man. And therefore, he was born in a manger. Take your time, Jesus. Then when he was 12, he stepped out of line. He didn't show up for a few days. I don't care if a 12-year-old is God in flesh. You don't need to be out there by yourself. Oh, no, 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 no. In Christology, that's not a contradiction. I wrote about it in Magnificent Meekness, one of the books you can get off of Amazon. I wrote about that, but I read it through a doctor of theology friend of mine. I shared with him. He said, no, 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 that's, that's in perfect lockstep. And he had to go home, and for 18 years, he had to take his time. And those are the 18 years we don't have a word uttered from him. He spoke, but it's not recorded. He was obedient to Mary and Joseph. He had to take his time. Then at 30, he took his time and turned water to wine. And then around 33, he had to take his time. He knew who 
what he was facing. I don't mind taking John chapter 2, water in the wine. At that point on the calendar, I don't want to take that time. There's pain and shame. You mean I got to let them see my shame? I haven't done anything wrong and you want me to carry the weight of the world the sin of the world and drink the cup to the dregs he had to take his time he had to take his time before Pilate the whipping post where brutes of men trained in extreme torture beat him within an inch of his death didn't steal it from him he gave it they stretched him wide and hung him high at 9 a.m. that Friday they suspend, suspended him on a cross and you want to take your time six hours became very important that's how long he was on the cross but your Bible lets you know that at noontime, three hours into the cross experience, something that could never be called an eclipse happened. And Alexander the Great recorded it too. It was worldwide. It is noted in history. All of a sudden, God just took a curtain and blanketed the sun. And the earth became dark. And there's three hours of darkness recorded in history. When you take your time, you just can't have day without the night. Now, I, 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 I don't get abysmal truths from the Word of God. I wonder what happened in three hours' time of darkness. I don't know, but one day I'm going to get to heaven. And I'm going to say, when the lights were out, what happened? Humanity is going to say, oh, deity was working. You that need divine healing in your bodies, stretch your hands out right now. Tonight we're going to put more focus on this. And thank you for being so patient because that was beyond 45 minutes. Thank you. Of course, that involves everything from start to finish, but thank you. Do you feel like we've heard a word from God? Now, the, that whole thing about Lazarus, I've talked about that many times, but the biggest part of that, that, that came at 10 o'clock last night and this morning when I awakened early. I've, I felt arrested by the Holy Spirit. I felt that God said, I'm going to talk to you and talk to those people. So we'll do more of the praying for the sick tonight as God anoints. Right now, say, thank you, Jesus. Say, I am loved by a God who loves me more than any human. Say this, say, he sits on a throne, high and lifted up, and all power is his. Now, right now, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I command sickness and disease to come off your body, out of your body, from your head, down through your toes right now, in the name of Jesus. I curse the curse. I curse the malignancy. I curse the lump, bump, growth, tumor, goiter, nodule. Go off bodies, out of bodies. I come against heart disease. In the name of Jesus, I command all sickness to be broken right now. Say thank you, Jesus. Would you put your hands down for a one second right before pastor comes? I'm trying to think. I, I thought I made a mental note when this came to me. It was, it was sometime yesterday, sometime yesterday, I saw someone walk up in this church 
And whether it's just terrible circulation or a severe case of diabetes, at least one of your legs down toward the foot, there was some discoloration because, because of circulatory problems as well as perhaps diabetes. If that's one person or more than one person and you have something very similar, would you raise your hand up right now? then don't be surprised, keep your hand up, don't be surprised if you begin to feel something move down. Since it involves the blood and hemo refers to blood and blood has a temperature, it has to be a perfect temperature. If you feel a cooling or a literal warmth going down your leg, don't be surprised because there could be a tangible sign with it. Right now, be healed. Be healed. As you sit, be healed. Back there, be healed. Over here, be healed. Am I missing anybody? Right now, be loose by the power of the living God. I command it. If it's just terrible circulation, open up and flow. If it is a diabetic situation, be healed right now. Let the coloration become normal. Let the circulation become normal. Can we give God some big praise? Look at your neighbor and say this. Say whatever you do. Don't miss tonight. 6 p.m. Going to be absolutely amazing. Would you welcome Pastor back? Why don't we thank the Lord with a hand clap of praise and lift our voice and just acknowledge him. There's no one like you, God. Thank you, God, for your words, God, because in your word is life and health and healing and strength. In Jesus' name. But then he does not stop. Psalm 19, verse 1, Psalm 19, verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. He does not stop with what's in the earth. He moves to the heavens. And one of the greatest symbols he's given us in the heavens is the sun. The S-U-N explains the S-O-N. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. For our God is a consuming fire. What is the sun? It's a ball of fire. Now watch this. Where I come from originally, Martha's Vineyard, they have beautiful beaches. And so they have what they call sun worshipers. These are people that go to the beach and lay out before the sun. See, to be a worshiper, even the world understands it. They call them sun worshipers, and this is the requirement. You must go out from protection and expose yourself to the sun to worship. Then you must expose yourself and lay down before the sun until the sun changes you. You don't have to tell somebody, you don't have to ask somebody if you've been in the sun. At the same token, you can tell somebody when they've had a lot of sun, you can tell them, you can, especially in the winter months, you don't have to wonder if they stayed here in Wisconsin. Where'd you go? Because the sun has transformed their image, literally their looks. It transformed. And that's why when you're a true sun worshiper, you will come out from the protective covering of the world that shields you from the love of God. You will begin to peel off your armor and expose yourself to God. You will lay down before God until God changes you. And a true sun worshiper doesn't just lay on his back. He flips over and lays on his stomach because he wants to change all the way around. 